Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's Children's Worship Service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful, and I hope you learned a lot. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for allowing us this time to study your word. We pray that this lesson reminds us to always put our trust in you, uh, remove any distractions right now that we may have uh, so that we may focus on our lesson. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rise and shine, campers. Up and at them. Today is a beautiful day for a trek. Trust me, you'll be glad you came today. This month is all about trust. Remember, trust is putting your confidence in something you can depend on. You can depend on me to lead you on the best trails to the most scenic views, but you can also depend on me to help you discover all kinds of cool things about God. And I can depend on you to be awesome and always ready to have some fun. So, are you ready for some fun today? All right, this one has to do with a sense of with your sense of hearing. And you've got to trust your ears when you're, you know, deep in the woods. So, let's play Guess That Camping Sound. If you've ever been lying in a tent trying to go to sleep, you've probably heard some strange sounds. You know, you've probably thought to yourself, uh, what was that? Was that a pine cone, a, a praying mantis, or a g -g 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 grizzly bear? <laughs> Well, let's see how well you can trust your ears. You ready? You're about to hear uh, the sounds of the forest at night. And there are 12 different sounds that make up this, this entire sound effect. And you'll have 30 seconds to listen. Uh, then you can yell to your screen. <laughs> except if you're in church, don't yell, uh, and see if you can get all 12 right. You ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, so you play along as you're watching on the screen. I'm going to ask my two guests who are here with me to, uh, to guess and see if they heard all 12 sounds. Um, I hear crickets. Yep, crickets one. Is that fire cracking like a campfire? Good, the snapping of the wood in the campfire. Okay. I also hear a wind. Ah, that gust of wind. That snoring sounds like you, Dad. Not cool. But right. Are those frogs? Yep, I heard the frogs. I hear an owl. Heard the owl. That reminds me of night. Is that popcorn popping? Oh, popcorn. Okay, that makes sense. Good job. Is that a guitar playing? Yes, the guitar playing. Um, I hear someone laughing. Yeah, the laughter. That was pretty easy to hear. Is that like a squirrel or something like that? Yeah, I didn't know either. It just sounded like a little, some kind of squirrely chipmunky thing. So, okay, it's a chipmunk. Uh, is that a bear? That bear <laughs> was terrifying. I also hear rain. And the rain. Very good. All right, guys, that was great listening. I can think of another awesome sound, too. And that's the sound of us worshiping God together. You ready? Here we go. I've got a reason to keep believing true whatever comes my way. I put my hope and trust in the only one who's faithful every day. In the dark 
darkest night You are by my side I'm never alone because I know to these words David wrote in Psalms 56 and 10. I trust in God. I praise his word. I trust in the Lord. I praise his word. I love that it repeats. Sometimes we need to hear something over and over again to, to actually get it. I mean, how many of you have parents who have to repeat things over and over for you to pay attention? Because I know I do. Well, here's something that's definitely worth repeating. It's our basic truth. We can trust God no matter what, we can trust him through anything we might face in life. And let's never forget that. Hi, everyone. I think it's really fun how we're traveling through God's big story this year. You know, we've talked about the big promise God made to a man named Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would make a great nation that would come from Abraham's family. Of course, that's exactly what happened. From Abraham to his son Isaac to his son Jacob. God continued to pass down his promise through the generations. So what happened with Jacob? Did he have any kids? He sure did. In fact, Jacob had 12 sons. One of them was a young man named Joseph. Now, some of you might have heard of Joseph the, or the story of Joseph before, or at least some parts of it. And if you haven't, though, you're definitely in for a treat. It's one of the most famous, most epic, most incredible stories like in the entire Bible. I want you to see if you can guess what happened to his story. So let's play Do You Know Joe? The first thing you need to know about Joseph is that he was his dad's favorite son. In fact, Jacob gave Joseph a special gift. Now, here's your first challenge. Did Jacob give Joseph A, a puppy, B, a beautiful coat, or C, a shiny new sword? If you guess B, you're correct. It was a beautiful coat. How do you think his brothers felt about Joseph getting that nice new swag? <laughs> if you said they were jealous, you are correct. You know, we, we read here in Genesis that they actually hated Joseph. They couldn't speak a nice word about him, not a single nice word. And one night Joseph had a dream. Do you think he dreamed about A, bundles of grain, B, pizza, or C, new standals? It was pizza. <laughs> nah, just kidding. It was bundles of grain. Here's what Joseph told his brothers. It can be found in Genesis chapter 37 at verses 6 and 7. Listen to the dream I had. We were tying up bundles of grain out in the field. Suddenly my bundle stood up straight. Your bundles gathered around my bundle and bowed down to it. The brothers were like, wait a minute. Are you telling us your bundle of grain standing tall like a king? 
and we're supposed to bow down to you? That is not what they wanted to hear. But Joseph wasn't done. He had another dream. What do you think this one was about? Was it A, pizza, B, a sloth climbing a palm tree, or C, the sun, moon, and stars? Yes, it was C, the sun, moon, and stars. So once again, Joseph told his brothers about his dream, and this time he told his dad as well. And he said, and this is at verse uh, Genesis chapter 37 at verse 9, it reads, this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Hmm. So in other words, Joseph's family would be bowing down to him. And that's not what the brothers wanted to hear either. Joseph's brothers left to go and take care of their flock of animals. And Jacob sent Joseph to join them just to report back what they were doing. And Joseph arrived where they were supposed to be, you know, at a place called Shechem. But they weren't there. And a man said they had moved to another spot. This spot was in Dothan. So Joseph went there next. The brothers saw Joseph when he was still off in the distance. And they made plans about what they would do when he got there. And what do you think their plan was? Was it A, to give him a high five, B, start up a soccer game, or C, take him out? And you're right. They plan to take him out, not to dinner. Look at what they said at verses 19 and 20. Here comes that dreamer, they said to one another. Come, let's kill him. Let's throw him into one of these empty wells. Let's say that a wild animal ate him up. Then we'll see whether his dreams will come true. Whoa, seriously, brothers? That's getting a little carried away, don't you think? Reuben, the oldest brother, actually thought so. So he tried to save Joseph by convincing his brothers to just throw him in the well without actually hurting him. And he was hoping that he would be able to rescue him later and take him back to his dad. When Joseph arrived, the brothers took his coat away and threw him, A, into a ball pit, B, into a well, C, into a bird's nest. Yep, they threw him into a well just like Reuben suggested. The brothers sat down to eat. They saw some people traveling with camels. It was a group of traders who were on their way to where? <laughs> a, Egypt. B, Las Vegas. C, Timbuktu. You're correct. The traders were on their way to, to Egypt. And this time, another brother, Judah, spoke up. And at verses 26 and 27, it reads, What will we gain if we kill our brother to try to cover up what we've done? Come, let's sell him to these traitors. Let's not harm him ourselves. After all, he's our brother. And the brothers agreed with Judah. They decided to sell Joseph to the traitors in exchange for some silver. And the traitors took Joseph away to Egypt. Now, apparently Reuben wasn't around for, the, for all of this because he came back later to check the well. Remember, he was hoping to help Joseph escape and then bring him back to his dad. And, and Reuben was super upset when he, when he saw that the well was empty. But then his brothers explained that they had sent Joseph on his way to Egypt. The brothers knew their dad would wonder what happened to Joseph. So they came up with a plan to try to hide what they'd done. They took Joseph's beautiful coat, dipped it in uh, the blood of a goat, and that way their dad would think that a wild animal had killed Joseph. All right, last question. What do you think Jacob did when his brothers lied and said that Joseph had died? Did he A, believe them, B, throw them into a well, or C, send them to Timbuktu? You're right. He believed them. Jacob believed the brother's story. He was so sad because he thought he lost Joseph. And meanwhile, poor Joseph was riding with the traders all the way to Egypt. And once they got there, they sold Joseph to be a servant of a man named Potiphar. And Potiphar was an important official who worked for the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh's like the king of Egypt. Potiphar was the captain of the Pharaoh's palace guard. That's where I'll leave the story of Joseph for today. But spoiler alert, it's just getting started. Joseph's life was full of some pretty big ups and downs. But there was one thing that never changed. God was with him. 
all through his life over and over again, Joseph had to trust God and trust that he had a bigger plan for him. Now, here's a really cool part. God is with us just like he was with Joseph. He's with us in the good times and at times when we feel alone. We can trust that he understands even when it seems like no one else does. Because our bottom line this week is when you think you're alone, you can trust God is with you. Let's pray and thank God for always being with us. God, thank you for this story. It's hard to believe all the awful things Joseph went through. But it's so good to know that you were with him through it all. Thanks for reminding us that you're with us the same way. We know we're never really alone because you're always there to help us. Help us to trust you no matter what. We love you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Imagine what it must have been like for Joseph riding with those traders all the way to Egypt. He must have felt just so alone. His own brothers had betrayed him and sold him to be a servant in a far off country. For all he knew, he would never see his dad or anyone in his family ever again. Imagine what it must have been like for Joseph riding with those traders all the way to Egypt. He must have felt just so alone. His own brothers had betrayed him and sold him to be a servant in a far off country. For all he knew, he would never see his dad or anyone in his family ever again. But still, even when Joseph felt all alone and even with all the things going wrong, he could trust that God was with him. That's what the writer of Genesis wrote at ver chapter 39 at verse 2. It simply says, the Lord was with Joseph. God had never left him. God was with him at home when his brothers were mad about his coat. God was with him when he was stuck at the bottom of, a, of the well. God was with him in Egypt too. And as we'll find out later, God had lots of amazing things planned for Joseph's life that he could never have dreamed of himself. It's, it was just all part of God's plan, even if Joseph couldn't see it at that time. Do you ever feel alone sometimes? We all do. That's why it's important to remember this. When you think you're alone, you can trust that God is with you. I mean, what are some times? What are some times when you feel alone? Maybe you've gotten separated from your mom or dad at the store. And that can be like a really scary feeling. Maybe you felt alone in your room when the lights go out at night. You know, some people can feel alone even when they're surrounded by people that they know. All of us have felt alone before. And when that happens, it's important for us to trust God because we know that we can always depend on him. And we can trust God no matter what. So how do you remember to trust God? How do you remind yourself that God is with you? A great way to do that is by praying to him. When you talk to God, it helps you not feel alone. That's what Jesus did. When he was sad or exhausted, or if he just wanted to spend time with God, he prayed. The next time you feel alone, remember that you can always talk to God. Anytime, anywhere, about anything. Thank you for joining me this week. Remember, when you think you're alone, you can trust God is with you. You can trust him no matter what. And you can talk to him whenever you want to. So until I see you again, I pray that you are kind and that you work hard and that, that you're helpful. But most importantly, I pray that you talk to God often. So until I see you next time, God bless you. Bye.